Welcome to the second part presentation on soil compaction that focuses on methods for relieving compaction. Coring, or as it is sometimes referred to as aerification, is a mechanical means of relieving soil compaction by providing channels or holes into the soil to improve air and water movement into the soil. Often too it is used in conjunction with top dressing to help control thatch or organic matter. Here is a list of benefits associated with coring. This schematic shows what I consider the classic and most popular means of coring. The cylinder looking component in this picture is called a tine. These tines are hollow and as they are pushed into the turf and then removed a soil core is ejected onto the turf surface. Commonly these tines have a half to three quarters inch diameter that penetrates the soil to a depth of two and a half to three inches. The principle is shown here. This gentleman is holding a handmade coring device that is manually pushed down into the green, for example, and pulled out. Actually, I saw a similar device in use in Africa. It's a brutal job. This is a close-up of the previous photograph showing the pattern. On most coring devices, the tines are on a 2 by 2 inch spacing, but more on that in a minute. Fortunately, mechanical units like this one that work tines up and down are most commonly used. One of the most popular coring units is this one, and you can see the vertical movement of the tines and the ejection of the cores. There are coring devices that are developed specifically for fairway use. Similar to the previous slide, this unit has been developed for large turf areas too, but by a different manufacturer. A second type of coring tine is the spoon. Units that use spoon tines are usually mounted on a rotating drum as shown here. Notice the number of tine holes being created per given area are less than with the more vertical up and down motion of the previous machines. This table shows the relationship between the tine diameter down the left side of the column and tine spacing along the top. Both the tine size and spacing is in inches. The common or classic way of coring is to use half to three quarters inch tines, mainly three quarters on a two by two inch spacing, which for example on a putting green accounts for about 11% of the surface area. Now you can see by changing the tine size or spacing, the impact is significant. Although 11% does not sound like a large amount, visually it is. As you can see from this lady golfer, she is not asking the young worker how his family is doing. To golfers, coring is the most hated practice done on a golf course because it interrupts play and disrupts the putting surface. Once cored, cores may be removed or reincorporated. Core removal can be done by hand, which if done, is commonly done on greens, or tees. There are mechanical means to push cores off a green. Shown here is a blade mounted on front of a triplex greens mower where the operator is just pushing the cores off to the side of the green. On larger areas like fairways, there are machines like this one and this one that can remove cores. Removing cores is often done in conjunction with top dressing primarily on greens. The amount of top dressing required is the amount needed to fill the holes. Hand brushing, as shown here, is extremely labor intensive and is not done on most golf courses. But it is the most effective for filling holes. Often the sand is spread like this, which we'll talk in more detail in the section on top dressing and then brushed in mechanically. After coring and top dressing, the turf is often rolled. 
One of the problems associated with sand top dressing in this operation is that sand particles are often left on the turf surface, which can be mowed off with mowers that causing damage or dulling of the blades on the reel. So rolling after top dressing has been demonstrated to work more of the sand down into the canopy and thus less of it being mowed off. Cores can also be reincorporated into the turf. On golf courses, reincorporation of cores is normally done on large areas like fairways and not done on greens for the disadvantages listed. The method for reincorporating cores back into the turf is shown here pictorially. Verticutting units are often used to chop up the cores, which are then dragged back into the turf. This is a verticutting unit. It replaces the cutting unit on a mower, and through the turning action of the blades, it is often used or primarily used for removing thatch and organic matter. Here is a verticut unit on this triplex mower being used to remove thatch from a fairway. It can also be used on greens. Here it's also being used on greens, but notice, compared to previous pictures, the intensity of verticutting can vary. As previously mentioned, verticut units too can be used to chop up cores. Normally after you've chopped up the cores, you run a drag mat across the turf to work the soil down. A variation of the traditional coring method is to use smaller diameter tines, normally a quarter inch in diameter, on a much closer spacing. Some quadratine operations double the number of tines on the machine's arm, like this one. The depth of these tines can be varied too. And while we have talked about hollow tines, the ones that eject a soil core, there are tines that are solid, known as solid tines, as shown here. These tines are referred to as a star tine. Here is a version of quadratining with a set of solid tines, which are referred to as pencil tines. Quadratining is often done during summer months to increase soil gas exchange with minimal disruption to the turf. Quadratining during the summer is sometimes referred to as venting. I thought I would end this discussion on quadratining with this unit that was being used on a golf course in Southeast Asia. I guess you can walk across a turf coring with these solid type of tines. Actually, these are nails. I don't think this is very effective. It must be a killer on the foot. In some situations, coring beyond the two and a half inch depth is desired. Drilling or deep tining are done for deeper soil penetration. This picture from the early 1960s shows a coring unit using tines that are actually drill type in nature. Deep drilling was initially done by hand, shown here with a drill and a long drill bit. The piece of plywood acted as a template for drilling. This is a current type of mechanically drilling device that is available. Drilling in combination of filling the holes with sand is popular. The term drill and fill is often used when drilling is done in conjunction with filling the holes with sand. This is a slow process and it's very disruptive, so it's often done in late fall after the golfing season has ended. Solid and hollow tine machines are also available that can punch holes deep into the profile. Deep tine coring is normally done with solid tines and it's done again to get better water movement through a compacted soil profile. I wanted to touch on a couple of practices for relieving compaction that are not normally considered coring in the traditional sense. 
The first is water injection, which was developed by Toro in the early 1990s. They called the device a hydroject and basically injected water at 2500 psi into the root zone. Depending on the speed, you could vary the depth of penetration. When this water was injected into the root zone, it would kind of shatter the soil, which you can see in this cup. Notice, too, that little if any disturbance to the turf occurred. The machine at the time probably cost a little over $20,000, but were quite popular. Actually, with this unit, people could go out weekly and use it, but research found that root hairs were damaged, and root hairs need approximately 21 days to reform. Thus, the reason venting is done normally on a 21-day basis. Toro does not make the hydroject anymore, and you really don't see them used much. I don't know why. Maybe they were too slow or whatever, but I still find them sitting around in maintenance facilities, so those that have them probably still use them to some extent. There is a version of the Hydroject known as a Dryject that is available on the market now. Normally, if you were a golf course, you would contract this service out. It is the same principle as the Hydroject. You inject water under high pressure into the turf, but in this case you're adding sand to the water. This is a Dryject in operation. And here in this cross section of the root zone, you can see the impact of the dry jack inserting that sand down into the profile. Recently, there are some new devices that are coming onto the market to relieve soil compaction. This is a new one called Air 2 G2, which I don't know too much about. The principle is these probes are inserted into the root zone and then compressed air is discharged through these probes, basically blowing up the root zone, causing fissures and such. I guess as long as soil compaction is an issue, there will be new ways of trying to alleviate it. This concludes this presentation.